Hey, man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome to Sunday. It's 2019. Look, it's the directors and the cast of the Lodge. Give it up for them, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, before we dive into anything, including the I love Good Night Mommy and stuff, I just want to talk about your meet cute story. You guys are co-directors, correct? And co-writers, co-everything. How did you guys... Not co-everything. Not co-everything. Well, <laughs> how did you guys meet and wind up working together? I think it's adorable. Tell them the story. Yeah, actually, I don't know if I can tell it more adorable than you can, but <laughs> I, we know each other actually for a very long time because I started as a babysitter, like babysitter of Veronica's kids when right. I was like 14. Right. And she tried to... <laughs> no, <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> and she didn't pay me actually, but because I was a huge film fan... Wait, this is the plot of the movie or your last <laughs> story? <laughs> Because this sounds as equally creepy as the movie. It itself. starts with the happy ending. That's yes, the problem. Yes. And then it goes downhill from there because she paid me in VHS tapes, which we would watch together, like all night long films. Because you wanted to. Yeah, I was stupid back then. <laughs> so you would babysit the kid and she would pay you and be here, you could watch this movie. Well, yeah, actually, it makes no sense in well, retrospect. No, when I came at one o'clock in the morning. I'm just figuring it out. When now. I came at one o'clock in the I mean, you were not a responsible babysitter. We have to say that. <laughs> but, but, but that's not so you. You left the so kid alone and, and watched VHS 14. cassettes. Why would you let me take care of your kid? <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I kind of yeah. She's very trustworthy. always believed in you. Very trustworthy. Bad babysitters <laughs> make good directors, is what they always say in this business. So, and they're right. And ir <laughs> irresponsible mothers who give their kids to 14-year-old boys uh, also make wonderful directors. Uh, when did the like discussion, no. like, hey, we should work together. We should make a film together. Actually, never. You guys still haven't how, had that how, discussion. We never how come did that. Did it <laughs> Actually, we don't know because, like, I then went to film school, and Veronica was like a journalist, and we never planned on working together. But then she got to know at a film festival like this crazy Austrian guy, like a very like 200 kilos, very charismatic, but always insulting people, and everyone was afraid of him. So Veronica, of course, instantly <laughs> fell in love because she likes difficult people, and right. so do I. And then she felt someone should do a movie on this guy, and no one wanted because he was so tough to hang around. Uh, and then she said, okay, maybe I should do it. But as she had never done anything before on her own, she asked me, because I also like difficult people, you want to join? <laughs> and then we, like, three years later, uh, and we maybe I may have lost many more years of our lives during doing that film, the least successful documentary of the year was <laughs> done. 400 people saw it. 400 people. Good Lord. Yeah, all over the world. That's more people than saw my last was movie. Like and I brought it here. So that's saying something. The Wait, so... No, you, while editing this documentary, we had the idea for Good Night Mommy. So we started writing, and then we kind of uh, went... Because we, we shot this documentary together, we thought, okay, we could co-direct Good Night Mommy too. Let's try it. Co-direction is a rare beast in this business anyway. Um, the route that you guys took to it is probably the most unique at, <laughs> at the festival this year, if not in all of film. Let's talk about uh, Good Night, Mommy, because uh, the, between that and this movie, The Lodge, clearly you guys have a problem with children. And that might and stem mothers. from the 14-year-old babysitting incident. It's all about children and mothers. And we told our mothers Good Night, Mommy was very autobiographical. Yes, and we apologized. We officially apologized to our mothers for the films we are doing. So, yeah. But my mom thinks the mom in the movie deserves it. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be fine with that. <laughs> um, all right, so you put together the lodge. You reach out to these cats right away. How does this happen? Why do you, how do you wind up with your cats? It's your first English language film, correct? Yeah. Correct. So you were like, they speak English, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. they speak better English. <laughs> <laughs> Which was part of the fun. Right. Actually, they were the only one who could speak proper English because we shot in Montreal and everyone else also sp only spoke French. The DP was Greek and we were like Austrian. So <laughs> I think they had a fun time not understanding anything we, we were trying to say. It's like, <laughs> there's something to be said for diversity unless you can't communicate with Demius one another. I think Demius learned English on the lodge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which was amazing. Yeah, we saw him again. We Recently, and his English is like amazing. 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 Yeah. How did we get to like? I, I don't like. Hmm. I, maybe it's a. No, we always. Story? Of, of course, we. W I, I, I can have something to say about this. Yeah, maybe. It's kind of funny. Please. 
Um, I got the script, like, it was a late last minute meeting for me. Mm. I got the script, like, a night before the meeting or something. And I think that was it. Was that what happened? Or did we Skype? We <laughs> Skype. Oh, we Skype. Okay. So I, I, read, I read the script, like, right before I talked to them. And basically, when I met them later, which wasn't that much later, I sat down with them. And then, after, and then I, they hired me. And then after they hired me, they were like, oh, we really liked you because you had nothing prepared. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, oh, that's a first. <laughs> like Important the first tip time. for every working yeah. actor or actress Which is out like there, never the, prepared. one of the first times that I've come that empty-handed, and I was just kind of like, I didn't really have much to offer. Right. And they were like, she's the one. <laughs> <laughs> what a selling point. I have nothing to offer you. Please hire me. What is, uh, did you see Goodnight Mommy? Did both of you see Goodnight Mommy before yes, this happened? Yes, I love Good yeah, I mean, this is kind of how I came to this story because I'd seen Goodnight Mommy and I reached out to my team and said, look, I don't care what they're doing next. I just want to work with these guys. I don't even want to know what's in the script. And then you realize no, you oh, I better that. open the script. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, oh, full frontal nudity. Damn. No, no it's not. Don't worry. Was, but, but there was, was there, no, wait, is no. there? No. Okay. Don't no. spoil it. Yeah, heavens. I know there's yes. a twist. I yes. was like, is that marketing. the twist? No. <laughs> um, what is the... What a, the, let's talk about the movie for those that are unfamiliar. I, I've read about it and whatnot. And it debuts tonight, is that correct? Yeah, tonight at midnight. Uh, the story is, uh, takes place in the middle of nowhere. Step-mom-to-be, hanging out with some kids. And their dad goes away and all hell breaks loose. Once again, these kids, like the kids at Goodnight Mommy, are just terrible little demons, correct? No, they're really no. cute and nice. <laughs> no, they're cute. And I think kids are usually, I mean, they're innocent anyway, kind of. <laughs> um. This is always what interests us, actually. The children are, they kind of bring their innocence. So whatever they do, they are innocent. And I think the film we made or we wanted to make is in this case that it's about there is no one who is kind of a bad guy, actually. They are all kind of victims in their own way, mm. and that's what kind of... I don't that know who like said that. it, but someone like reading the script or being at the set on, the, on set said, this is so weird, you're making a horror film with no bad guys in it. <laughs> so I think everyone's maybe behaving terribly towards someone else at one moment or another, but no one is truly evil, and I think that's like how very much how we see the world and we think uh, what should be reflected in movies more often. I saw that mic going up. Yeah. You, you're going to tag up, no? Just think. <laughs> <laughs> She's just rubbing her face. We can get you a tissue, man. We have those here. <laughs> Riley, you have a pretty interesting resume so far, man. Well curated and you're picking like cool projects. This is your third, fourth Sundance movie? Third Sundance movie? I think this is my fourth time at Sundance. Fourth time at Sundance. Yeah. Sorry for to make you do year. math this early in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and third horror movie, correct? Third horror movie. So many questions. I, know. I mean, That's I've kind of done a lot of films that are sort of riding that line where I don't know if they're horror, this horror yeah. like psychological thriller. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, this is probably the. S I haven't seen this movie, so I have no idea what what genre it is. Yes. <laughs> You started the movie being unprepared, <laughs> yes. you finished the movie not seeing yeah, it. Yeah. All makes absolute sense. It's a theme, yeah. Just trying to be consistent. They, uh, we were we, there during no, the we shoot. Were, yeah, we were so afraid that she, what she would say, so that's why we didn't show it to her. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. What we like to do here before we let you guys go is we got this winter hat, man. We put questions in. You pick one of those, everybody answers this question. Oh my god. Oh god. I need my glasses. She's blind. <laughs> Can I read it? Yeah, yes. absolutely. <laughs> if you had to be snowed in with any celebrity, who would it be? Oh there you go. If you could be, if you had to be snowed in with any celebrity, who would it be? Marlon Brando. Wow. He's Ed, dead. Ed, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it'd be a quiet snowed in <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah. Why Brando? <laughs> Why Brando? Explanation. Oh, I, I, I'm just an all-time like admirer of his work, and um, yeah, I liked him from beginning to the end. So I, I yeah. Deep cuts, Paul. You. <laughs> but you answered that so quickly. Did you prepare it? No. Did you have the head at home? <laughs> I was like, she's been thinking about her whole life. She's like, finally, somebody asked Brando. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, I don't know. Do we have to say Riley and Richard? <laughs> I was 
say, did, did Veronica and Severin count? Because I feel like we've yeah, been snowed up. in with them and we yeah. know what it's like, and it's really fun. Oh, now you're gonna oh, ask nice. Kiss after you got the job? Lying. That we actually had so much fun. I had we so much fun making celebrities, this. Celebrities, do we? Well, yes, you I do. Don't know. Oh, okay. To me, you do. absolutely. Oh my God, at Sundance, every director is a celebrity okay. for a very short pump. <laughs> you're in the fun. And who was laughing back there? <laughs> People that see you as a celebrity, man. Now it's easy to get laughs. Watch this. I'm the host at Sundance this year. <laughs> Somewhat laughs. Uh, give it up for the, for the directors and the cast of The Lodge, ladies and gentlemen.